And we're looking live with AJ Allmendinger. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Driver of the number 16 Ellsworth Advisor Chevrolet for College Racing. And boy, I tell you, it's good to be AJ Allmendinger, especially in the last couple of weeks. You win a race and then you come in and win $100,000 at the Dash for Cash at Olmstead Miami Speedway. How good is it to be AJ Allmendinger right now as we head into Talladega? It's it's pretty nice only because I'm married to my wife Tara. That's that, she's right next to me, so I have to say that. <laughs> Bonus points. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And that's she says I have to do all my Zoom meetings with our wedding photos behind us. So <laughs> for two reasons, it's good to be me. No, it's uh, it's been a fun couple of weeks with college racing, and yeah, I just uh, couldn't imagine really the way everything worked out and. and with this pandemic and how much of a struggle it's been through the, uh, really through the whole world with it. And finally getting NASCAR racing going in. Just a couple of boxes for me to run Matt Cawley. I'm trying to be all knowing Matt Cawley racing. Give me a couple of options to what I've got there racing. We've been on for so long and it's worked out better than I could imagine. Good deal. Well, we're going to open up the floor for questions. If you have a question, I encourage you to, uh, raise your hand using the participants icon. You can press the button to raise your hand. We're going to start with Daniel McFadden from NBC Sports. Go ahead with your question, Daniel. Daniel McFadden, NBC Sports. Go ahead with the question. Can you, can you hear me? Yes, sir. All right. So, uh, AJ, can you just describe what the last two weeks have been like for you, winning the race, um, Get, getting the the dash for dash for cash money, what? Did, how would you compare this two week period to other similar periods in your career? How how do these two weeks stack up for you? Oh man, that's a good question. You know, back in my champ car days, to have the the run that we did, uh, you know, where I won three or four in a row, and and that was that was a lot of fun. It was kind of the same situation. It was unique in the sense that. Uh, that was with the new team when I did it in Champ Car, and and I don't want to say it was unexpected, but when you go to a new team like that to have that much success so early was uh, was a little bit of a shock. And you know, now me just being a different point in my life, uh, and and really being so thankful and and any opportunity that I get to drive a race car, uh, but especially with Colleg Racing because Matt Colleg, I mean, really has made that third car generally my car. They uh, basically said that. When that's running, they want me driving it. So, you know, as I said, just all the men and women at College Racing, for them to give me these opportunities, work hard, build an extra race car for me at all these races to go out there. And, you know, I just want to always show my appreciation and, and my thanks for the effort that everybody puts in and, and gives me these opportunities. And the best way to go do it is, is to go win races and, and then with the Dash for Cash from Xfinity, to have that that hundred thousand dollars, which was a you know it's a big deal. So uh, it's just it's fun, and I think you know maybe back in in like two thousand six when that happened in Champ Car, maybe I didn't allow myself to enjoy it enough because I was always focused like okay that just happened great let's celebrate let's move on to the next weekend. And now this point in my life just to try to enjoy it more because you never know when it can stop, and I never know when my last race is going to be. So. I hope I have a lot more going, but uh, definitely trying to enjoy it and, and really be at the race shop and, and at the racetrack and having fun with the race team and uh, more than anything, just showing my appreciation. And if you have, so, oh, sorry. And, go ahead, Danny. And, and go, go, going into this weekend's race at Talladega, what, what's the biggest challenge facing you and that team, given that you guys didn't get the chance to, to race in February at Daytona? Uh, I honestly think this is uh, take out the race itself and being Talladega and knowing that anything can happen and and just the the, the issues that speedways can cause. On, uh, this is probably the easiest weekend for us because we know that the the Colleg Racing Chevys are fast. Uh, you know, ECR horsepower, Chevrolet, everything that they do for us is racing, and we know that the cars have a lot of speed. So what happened to Daytona was. A mechanical failure on both mine and Ross's car that we fixed and it won't be an issue again. Uh, it was unfortunate that it happened to Daytona, but 
you know, I look at it when things like that happen, uh, you know, positives can come out of it. And I don't know if we're running, we never run on Google. And I don't know if that led to, to have an opportunity to go race at Atlanta and so on. So uh, our super speedway program has always been really fast. Uh, you know, last year, Daytona with Ross winning. Uh, Ross and Justin at, at Talladega and Daytona won stages. So these cars are going to be fast, and uh, our engineers have been really good about the, the simulation and making sure all the ride heights and everything are correct. So when it goes into this weekend of knowing what's racing, this is by far the easiest out of everything. Okay, our okay, next question. Our next question will come from Dustin Long. Go ahead with your question, Dustin. Yeah, AJ, um, I just want to get your perspective as somebody who's had to do this, but also from an analyst uh, role, is each week we keep talking about the challenges that drivers face. When, when, the, when the season resumed, it was Darlington. It was like, oh, my God, how can these guys race without any practice at that track? And then it was, you know, Bristol, the speed's there. How can they get adjusted and not having – uh, not having somebody else on the, on the track beforehand to kind of uh, heat up the, uh, the traction compound. Talladega this weekend, three races in a week. Can you give me a perspective of the challenges um, that drivers are going through each week? It seems like it's a significant thing. Maybe, maybe for the 45 greatest drivers in the world, it's not a big deal. What, what, can you give me more of a sense as somebody who's experienced it how big of a deal is it that each week there's something different or is it really that, that big of a deal, a deal? Well, I mean, I think from my perspective, it's a little different because I've never raced an Xfinity car at any of these racetracks. Sure. I've been to them many a times, but I've never ran an Xfinity car. So I'm always a little bit nervous of the unknowns of how a car is going to drive and, and just trying to get used to it and get a comfort level during the race uh, in an Xfinity car at that racetrack. But, you know, I think Darlington was probably all the drivers were nervous and, and okay, how's this going to react? But as we've done this race after race now over the last several weeks, it just becomes the normal and we're kind of used to it. And, you know, you get a sense as a race team going into that race weekend, you know, have you been good at, at hitting your ride heights? Have you been good at guessing the right setup? Uh, you know, different racetracks, rubber builds up on it and changes the racetrack. Martinsville is a, a key example. You see Ryan Blaney start from the pole and go a lap down in 50 laps and then drive back to the front. So different tracks at times lends itself to it changing and the setups and, and handling the race cars really changing throughout the course of a race. But uh, I think for the race teams and for the drivers now, it's, it's a new normal uh, going into this. I think we all were like, wow, we're going to do this literally with no practice, but we're used to it, and, and I think a lot of us enjoy it now. It, it, it makes you just focus on the racing itself and not having to go through the whole weekend. And as from an analyst point of view, when you look especially at the Cup Series, um, without having the practice, is this, is this more benefit particular drivers, or is it just a case of the top teams are always going to be typically better? Um, in this new normal you talk about, how does, this, how does this impact drivers and what more a driver has to do now without having that, that practice time to kind of build up uh, on a race weekend? Yeah, it's I, no matter what series you're in, the, the top teams and the, and, the, and the best drivers are going to always rise to the top to a certain extent. I do believe watching it that it allows – maybe the smaller race teams or the race teams that haven't had as much success lately really show up. And if they nail the setup, right. I and mean, we've seen it, a John Hunter Newman check, for example, you wouldn't think at Darlington that front row motorsports normally would, would run up front there, especially as a rookie. And they went and had a great run that first race. Uh, you look at RCR right now, they're starting to get back. It seems like a little bit on track. So I do think without practice, it allows some of these teams to try to hit the setup a little bit better and maybe the bigger teams miss it or if you're say a four car organization maybe you're trying four different setups during the race and one of those teams or a couple of those teams that works well for and the others don't so it does mix it up a little bit you're still going to always have the best rise to the top uh but yeah i mean as a driver you just i don't really think you it, it's put it this way i wouldn't do anything different than if I had practice, I'd still go watch the videos, go back and watch the, the race from last year, talk to my crew chief and, and my race team. Okay, 
what do we think is going to be the issues? It's no different than, uh, than going into a full weekend with practice and qualifying. Dustin, you have Thank a follow-up? Thank you. Good deal. Well, AJ, I do have a question. I want you to put your analyst hat on, but looking particularly at your team in the NASCAR Xfinity Series, Colleague Racing, uh, this team has grown over the past couple of years and you know, now features you know, a strong stable of drivers top to bottom, including yourself. What has been the secret to the growth of that team and really making a name for itself in the NASCAR Xfinity Series? Well, I really, it, I think it's, it's going about it in a smart way, not trying to get big too early. And I think that's what happens with a lot of organizations is they immediately feel like, okay, we, we got to go to a second car or we got to go to a third car. We have to get bigger because with more race cars on the racetrack, you're going to have more info. Well, if you start spreading yourself too thin, that doesn't help. And, and it, it just, it hurts however many race teams that you have. So Call of Racing now has been in existence for just over five years. They've had a one car team the whole time. Last year, uh, between myself and Ross Chastain and Elliot Sadler running a few races, they added a second car. Uh, we ran three, obviously, at Daytona in July. But it was really to get the, get the organization ready for a second car full time. And with my races, you know, the reason we were able to do more races, sorry about that, uh, is the fact that during the pandemic, the team worked hard and we had cars ready. So it wasn't like they just started throwing cars together uh, at the last second to add more races for me. So uh, that's the biggest thing that I see is the fact that they've done it the right way. They haven't tried to grow too big too soon. And when they could add a second car, they have. And because of that, they're having the success uh, that we are having. And really, you know, I, I try to say this without trying to be negative to, to anybody that was at Color Racing prior to that. But, you know, Justin Haley last year, he stepped the game up for the race team. And, and he brought a lot of raw speed, even as a rookie. But he showed the team what direction they needed to go, where the team lacked. Uh, when I got on the road courses, I tried to help our program be a little bit better, and I felt like we did that. And then with Ross and Elliot running the second car at some mile-and-a-half racetracks, and I think, you know, Elliot ran it at Richmond as well, it, it's just helped the program go in the right direction. First time this year, they have in-house engineers uh, and people really focusing on the call of racing cars themselves, and it's showing. Good deal. Uh, our next question will come from Dustin Long. Go ahead, Dustin. Yeah, another thing, AJ, obviously the focus is Talladega this week, but looking ahead, it's not too far from Indianapolis and, and the, the, the Xfinity road course race there. Obviously, Matt DiBenedetto is the only one that's been on track. Uh, you guys will get a couple practice sessions on Friday to help out. But uh, what kind of a challenge is that going to be? How do you prepare for that? Is everybody just kind of watching any video from the, Matt's car or, or pestering Matt about what that was like when he tested in January? Yeah, it, it really goes to some video and, and then doing some sim work uh, to try to get ready for that Indy road course. You know, the toughest thing, even on sim, is, is you're trying to really gauge, okay, what is this track like? Is it unique to maybe a Road America or a place like that? And you're trying to base your setup off of that. It, it's somewhat some guesswork. Uh, you know, obviously, Team Penske, they got an advantage because even though it wasn't Austin Sindrick driving the car, it's a Team Penske car. So they have essentially a half a day or whatever it was of testing uh, to get a general idea. So it doesn't shock me that they'll, they'll have a little bit of advantage going into the weekend. But, uh, yeah, just trying to focus on what the key areas of the racetrack are going to be. Uh, you know, that long front straightaway turn one on starts and restarts are going to be chaotic. Uh, I think you're going to see a lot of action there. Uh, in the infield, it can get kind of tight, so you're going to have a lot of beating and banging on each other. And I'm pretty sure that it probably used up tires pretty quick. That road course on the infield can really abuse tires. So just trying to focus on what, what are the key essential areas that we really have to look at and trying to make the, the right guess on a setup. So we got a couple of practices, fortunately enough. We won't have qualifying from what I've been told, so most likely I'll have to start near the back. but. Uh, we're getting used to that, so it's okay. And um, 
obviously Indianapolis, uh, obviously there's certain racetracks that are certainly significant and special. Um, there aren't too many first. Obviously, the Xfinity Series has already raced at Indianapolis, but obviously this is the first uh, race on a road course at Indy for this series. How much would that mean to be a winner? The significance, I, I understand, it's not going to carry the, the the realm of like the first Brickyard winner from in 1994, but still, from from a driver's point of view, what would it mean to to get that? And what's you know, does that make a driver want to do a little bit more to try to get that win at Indy? I, to be completely honest, it's not, it has nothing to do with it being the first road course ever, you know, for, for Xfinity at Indy. It's just the history behind the racetrack. I mean, it's, it, there's very few places and we talk about it all the time. It, it that, that when you go to a racetrack that has so much history behind it, whether it's Indy cars, uh, stock cars, whatever it may be, you say the word just Indy. And people, people that aren't in motorsports understand what the history is behind that racetrack. And just to pull into victory lane or, or kiss the bricks, it's something special. I don't care what car you're in. Uh, I remember this at, at Daytona. I won in a Skip Barber National Series car at Daytona. And I pulled into victory lane, and that was special to me because it was Daytona. It's the same thing. Brickyard, just all – the history and the winners in so many different forms of racing there now. Yeah, I would love to be a part of that. I don't, I don't need it being the first road course or anything like that to have any more uh, incentive to go out there and try to win that race. I just want to be part of that history and it'd be something special to, uh, to kiss the bricks. Even if we have to do it with masks on, I don't care. I'll kiss them with the mask on. Thanks, AJ. Well, good deal, AJ. Really appreciate you taking the time to join us today, and uh, we'll see you at Talladega. I appreciate it. Thank you, guys, for everything you do.